after 11 years, finally, we get to see a female superhero in a Marvel movie with real superpowers, Captain Marvel. Every woman worldwide, whether they are a comic book fan or not, are so happy seeing a woman getting on her feet again and again, proving everybody wrong, battling every adversary that comes before her. So don't blow us away with energy blasts when we say this. There are some things in the movie that seems a little out of place sometimes and needs a little explanation. You can still enjoy the movie by simply ignoring them, but feel free to check this video out if you're just as inquisitive as we are. Huge spoiler alert in case you haven't watched the movie. The intro of Stan the Man Lee. All Marvel fans are familiar with the Marvel Studio logo and how it plays at the beginning, where brief glimpses of various MCU heroes and character are seen. We mean who's not there. Iron Man, The Hulk, Thor, Black Panther, Ant-Man, Black Widow, Star-Lord, and Captain America. Full of action, full of aggression. But the recent big hit of Marvel Studio had something different and unique for their audience. The intro of Captain Marvel features Lee action. That is, the intro only contains bits and pieces of the cameos Stan Lee played in all the MCU movies. That's really appreciable, except for the fact that it's slightly problematic. Don't just throw your Stormbreaker at us right away. Hear us out first. Well, remembering Stan is all good with us, we just find the timing a little problematic. We mean, he is Stan the Man Lee after all. And Captain Marvel is the first ever female-led movie in the 11 years long history of Marvel Studio. That's why his cameo at the train is perfect. Just where he is supposed to be amidst the action. Don't you agree? Walkie, no talkie. For such a developed race like the they need a lot of to work, especially on their communication while they were on a secret mission. And if the enemy can change into literally any one of the Kree as they are shapeshifters, the precautions have to be doubled, right? But the Kree don't act as technology advanced and intelligent as you think they would. Their communication system falls apart right after they encounter a group of scrolls disguised as locals. We mean that's not supposed to happen, right? It seems almost too convenient for the plot. The comms going down right after they split up. And if scrolls use some kind of signal jammer, isn't the Kree supposed to be prepared for that? Take it from us. You should develop your comms if your enemies are some bad shapeshifters and your team needs to split up. The train doesn't stop at any of the stations. The train that Carol and the Skrull are battling on is the Los Angeles Metro Blue Line. The Blue Line keeps running on a 22-mile stretch of track between downtown LA and Long Beach with 22 station stops. And a little calculation will tell you that it's one stop for each mile. The train moves at a normal speed of 55 miles per hour, implying that it should get into a station about once every moment. However, does it stop while Carol and the Skrull are at each other's throats? Not even once, amigos! Since the time frame of the movie is set in 1995, and you might argue that maybe it was different back then, or perhaps this is the one piece of the motion picture that the movie producers thought nobody would think much about and chose to swindle only a bit. And while we are at the subject, the whole train sequence is actually really convenient to the plot because the whole time nobody pulled the chain or emergency cord while Captain Marvel beat the living daylights out of an elderly citizen or vice versa. The power vested in me by whom again? Being a superhero isn't a piece of cake. The struggle that torments within a person one has to overtop that to become a superhero. But that's not all. You get to do all the crazy stuff like superhero landing, supersonic punching, or smashing the living daylights out of your enemies. 
While watching superheroes getting their superpower can be a treat to the eyes, the way of getting that power should be properly explained. As for most of the comic book fans, they might not like anyone messing around with their favorite characters. Why all of this is relevant to Captain Marvel? Here is why. Not to be all nerd-heavy here, but according to the source material, Carol became Captain Marvel when some alien device went kaboom and combined her DNA with a Kree. But the movie altered that, and to say it in comic book term now, we're left with someone who was empowered by getting bitten by a radioactive kaboom. That is, she absorbs the power of an exploding engine which is powered by the Tesseract. Then again, if you want a Marvel movie to be successful, you put some reference of the Tesseract in it, don't you? Nickelback Fury Nobody probably imagined the Nick Fury backstory would turn out to be this humorous. Captain Marvel gave us the young version of Nick Fury, which shares little semblance with the cool guy director Fury we're used to seeing. In Captain Marvel, Nick Fury is portrayed as kind of a joke. For all his discussion of field work, he's for the most part only a blockhead with an amazingly short memory with regards to whether the creature he's holding is a real monster. We don't see the Meshilvian super government operative who was ready to shoot one of his own men out of the sky in the Avengers. We see a person who keeps an evil creature loaded with super weapon in his office after it's murdered like eight folks. Perhaps one more decade or so at work got him jaded. Maybe all those hairs were blocking his thought process. Don't blame us. He couldn't even think of the term Avenger on his own. What's the emergency now, Nick? Out of all the threats posed upon the Mother Earth, why Fury chose to call Carol now? Because half of the entire universe is erased? Maybe. But that doesn't mean the other times weren't an emergency situation, right? I mean, Loki attacking the Earth with monstrous creatures has to be counted, right? Captain Marvel could have contributed because Loki did it by using Tesseract, the power source of Carol. Or the time when Ultron threatened to end the human civilization. An entire city falling from the sky is pretty serious. We're probably being judgmental, but that's our job. What do you think about these things? Let us know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to our channel and press the gray bell icon to get notifications from other cool videos we know you'd like.